Welcome back to Stitch Files with Barrett in America. I am your co-host, Brandon. And I'm Sarah. And I'm Bob. Here in our beautiful studio in Archdale, North Kakolaki, which is North Carolina. And the it's police slang. sirens. I don't know if you can like, hear that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's siren. going on outside. That was perfect timing. <laughs> yeah. I, I think they're in the parking lot looking for one of us, but. We have yeah. the doors locked. That's right. We're yeah. locked in here. The studio is not soundproof. You think it would be, but it's not. Definitely not. All right, episode four we are at, and we're going to be talking today about uh, buying a used machine. Should you mm-hmm. buy one? Things to think about. And we're also going to do a recap of Atlantic City, the Expressions Expo, which was, when this comes out, it'll be two weeks ago. Three? Three weeks ago. Because <laughs> we just released a A fortnight ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so we're going to kind of dive into that real quick. Um, just do a brief little synopsis of what we thought. Uh, my overall opinion was it's my first trade show working for Bearden, and I thought it was cool. It was very small. Um, I think the people that did come by the booth were quality people. Mm-hmm. Like, they're asking good questions. They seemed very interested. Um, Benny was there, which was great. Benny, if you're watching this, <laughs> Shout out to I Benny. love you. Benny, if you're not watching this, take a break for a little bit and breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it was my first Atlantic City show, too. I, um, yeah, we missed last year, obviously. I was pleasantly surprised. I thought it might be dead. I thought we'd be bored. Um, but there were, I, I thought there were a lot of people for, for what yeah, it was. Yeah, and there wasn't, you know, there were some lulls in the day. But I'm telling you, I would look at my watch, and it would be like 3 o'clock. And I'm like, dang, what happened? And like I said, the people that came by were, were very interested. The, um, we had the CO1 sewing um, patches, stitch file patches. Oh, Get yours we now have, we at www. We should have had one to hold up. Yeah, I'm just should. kidding. Yeah. But we're professionals. Yeah. And, um, the forehead was running caps. The XL2 was running caps. And the Pro 3 was running the Majestic Tiger design. With applique. With applique. Mm. Digitized by Billy Chestnut. A.K.A. Blissimo <laughs> Sanskrit. <laughs> You'll never get that one right. <laughs> uh, C- Carbonaro the Third from Spain, hey. Italy. Hey. <laughs> well, I don't know who he is. He's a man of mystery. He's he, a great Barrett in tech. Yes, yeah, he's, he's, he's awesome. He's a good guy, too. We consider him a friend. And he was good with customers, too. I had a good yeah. time hanging out with him yeah. and his friends. It was nice running, running Atlantic City with the boys. And Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the nice thing about the show, too, is that I felt like there was plenty of time to talk to each person yeah. Yeah. instead of feeling like you had to, like, hop and juggle so Well, you've been, you've been to, uh, to uh, Long Beach, mm-hmm. which is slammed. It's wall-to-wall people. I mean, you, you can't even go to the bathroom. Uh, seriously, it, that's how busy it is. It's, well, you can. Well, yeah, well, <laughs> if you're wearing, a, wearing a, a way. an adult diaper. Anywhere's a bathroom. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, I was there on Sunday. Um, the, it was... No, Saturday. I'm so confused. Yeah. Was it? Yes. Saturday. It was Saturday. Yes, because we, we, we left on Saturday. Saturday. Right. Saturday. Yes. Holy cow. But there was a lot of traffic on, on Saturday, and maybe because it was Saturday instead of Sunday. Um, but I, I know I got the feeling that the people that did come, um, like you guys said, they were really qualified buyers. Not to be mean, but sometimes you just get people who are, who are tire kickers, and that, that, that's fine. I mean, we'll talk to anyone. We're proud of our product. We want to promote it. We want people to, uh, you know, to see the machines, see them running, uh, ask questions about them. But we really had some genuine, genuinely good people who are going to buy something. They may not buy from us, but uh, we did sell some product, some some machines. Mm-hmm. We've gotten more orders than I anticipated. Um, something else I want to add, since that was a, probably my 24th or 25th, maybe 26th Atlantic City show, I've never gotten in and out a show as quickly as I did that one. That is shout out Steve on the cart. Steve on the cart, <laughs> with, my uh, man <laughs> with Freeman. With Freeman, he he was a good guy. He actually let me drive inside the convention center yeah. to unload. I, and unload back up. I mm-hmm. hope we're not blowing up his spot. Hey, you know what? I got a union card now, so <laughs> well that we were they were going to hire. We almost got hired, and I made a I made a great friend. I don't remember the guy's name, but I think I was his errand boy. He was like, "Hey, go upstairs. Tell him to turn the AC on." Okay, man, I did. Very nice. But they didn't. Good experience. They didn't, they didn't, no, no, they didn't listen to me, which who does? But, but, I mean, for the size of the show, 
it, it was extremely small, probably about a quarter of the size that it normally is because it's it's either it, there's always Long Beach is the best show, followed yeah, Fort Worth and Atlantic City are our tie probably. There's some some days, some days, some years Atlantic City is busier, and some years Fort Worth is too. Um, but you got to keep in mind too uh, that the most of the population is in the northeast up there so mm-hmm. there's a lot of people that are, that are going it pulls it pulls from you had customers up there too didn't you, you had a few customers yeah uh, yeah one lady came st- well she said she was strictly coming just to talk to me which was i was nervous <laughs> yeah she that was a quite a hike and then uh one of frank's customers from puerto rico mm-hmm. nope they're from miami, miami. but somebody miami, was yeah. there from puerto rico yeah so yeah Shout out to those people. That's also, a long haul. while we're shouting people out, let's shout, shout out. out the people that came up to us and said that they're listening already. Yes. That was so cool. Zelfa? Those, those poor people. Right? Zelfa? Zelfa. Zelfa. She is a sweet lady. Zelfa, you are a sweetheart, honey. I'm sorry I wasn't there. Um, yeah. well, I've known you for a long, long time, and she's a wonderful Bearding customer, as all of our customers are. But uh, I consider her a friend, and I miss seeing her. I was looking forward to it. Yeah, she said she really enjoyed the podcast, and Good. I'm her favorite. Uh, let's move on. <laughs> we'll we'll let that one else and I, that. I, I didn't hear her say that. Yeah, well, that. No. she actually so, wrote it down. Yeah. Um, Do you? <laughs> I don't have. Can you produce? This? I don't have that document with okay. me. <laughs> but anyway, you guys, I mean, it was, it was a success. You think? I, yeah. I do. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I think it was a really good way to get back into it. Yeah, that and um, nice. well, and you know, too, the the thing about it not being so crowded is, you did get to spend time. Like if you were you were a you're not a vendor you're a exhibitor a, no what are you what are the people an attendee yes <laughs> they got to spend more time I think <laughs> engaging with people than just like being in a mob and you know what I'm saying yeah. like you're talking to a, a well it, it, there's pluses and minuses to small shows when a show is gigantic like Long Beach it's hard to see everything because when, when, when folks go, they want to see everything. They mm-hmm. want to see all the, all the, all the vendors, you know, whether it be garments, machines, printers, screen printing, all of that stuff. It didn't take long to walk the show. It, it was a lot smaller. The, I was talking to Sarah about this. When we looked at the floor plan, I'm like, well, you, you, which you really can't tell, but there were like 67 exhibitors, 63, something like that. I thought, well, that's, that's going to be worth doing. And when we got there, and got in the convention center, I'm like, wow, this is very, very small. I mean, you were at Charlotte last year. That was a small show. I don't I don't know if this was bigger than Charlotte. Yeah, I don't think so. It felt pretty similar. Yeah. But we had a we had a big booth with plenty of room, so the social distancing thing worked out really well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we all wore masks, of course, which wasn't as bad. You made that comment, too, that uh, we could hear people. Yeah, you yeah. Know, so and the joy of a bear, and it runs so quietly. Conversation is a breeze. But we had a bigger booth this year. We had 600 square feet, which we usually get 400. And we did this even before COVID. We just wanted a bigger booth because we were getting pretty crowded with all the people we had there, and it worked out really well. So mm-hmm. we had plenty of room to move around, talk to customers. Cartwheels. Yeah, yeah. Splits. I like doing splits myself. <laughs> I've yeah. done one. Yeah. Well, <laughs> mistake. Was but um, split, yeah, it was pants. it was a it was a big it was a big success. Very successful for our first show back, and and it was fun talking to customers and getting back out there. Yeah, and I got to meet Jamar. He was a yep. super friendly guy. He got his chicken wings, and I hope he enjoyed them. He got them just before he was leaving on a flight. So, well timed by me, as always. Pat yourself on the back there. Oh, right? I will. Any praise I can give myself. Next up is uh, Fort Worth will be... Next week. Hard yes. Believe. Yeah, it'll be the... This is so hard when we do these in advance. Oh. Because it'll be the... When you hear this, <laughs> Fort Worth will have happened. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I can't figure it out. It'll be a week after. Yes. Yeah, so, so we'll recap Fort Worth in the, the next episode. So yeah. stay well, tuned. Well, we'll recap Fort Worth. We'll because let you you're, know. you're not going... We'll let you know how it was. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't talked to my people. So I may be there. Talking, have you talked to your agent? Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. The show that we're doing after that, though, if you do want to plan on seeing us yes, and in the future. We'll I will say it. this. John Kuhn has pointed out that the link on the website doesn't work to the the Charlotte, Charlotte show. show. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, yeah, he put, on, if you're on the Facebook group and stuff, the information's there. We'll make sure we put that in the description, possibly. 
Um, but that is October 28th through the 30th? 30th. Yeah. I'm pretty no, sure. No, it's only two days. It's 29th through the 30th. I don't it's, know. It's it's <laughs> <two days>. <laughs> <laughs> Not only is the website broken, we're broken. <laughs> yeah. It's in October. Good luck. <laughs> we'll be there sometime. Yes. It's the last it's the last week of October. It's, and it's, it's in the it's, convention center in Charlotte. Is yeah, that right? The, yep, yeah. The Charlotte yeah. Convention Center. But it's uh it's a two I know it's a two day show, 29th and thirtieth. It has okay. to be because that's a Friday, Saturday. Yeah. Oh, that makes and uh, sense. that's again, that's right down the road from us. We're only gonna have two machines. If you're if you're coming to see a multi head, we will not have a multi head there. We will have uh, the XL two and the and the Pro three. Uh, it's just not a big enough show for us to take a take a multi head. It's traditionally small, but uh, come yeah. out anyway. Yeah, come by, say hi. Come and see. Come, get a sticker. Get a, a, a Stitch Files patch. If yeah, we and we're. Left. Um, I guess I can. I'm gonna say it anyway. I think we're trying to work out. Um, John Coon, who's a wonderful technician mm-hmm. in Atlanta, or, or Georgia, and other states. Who cares about those? That's my state. <laughs> He's going to be doing like a Q and A tech yep. Q and A there at the booth. He's volunteered his time. Uh, he is a wealth of knowledge. So we're trying to arrange the ins and outs of that, but that will be happening too. So oh, we're going to get him on the podcast too at some, oh, yeah. some yeah. point. We want to interview him and have a little Q and A, um, a technical Q and A that he can answer questions. Not that we aren't experts, we aren't, but <laughs> definitely um, not. And, and, you know, the technicians get questions, too, that we don't normally get. But right. uh, that's something that's in the works. Is uh, John's so busy, we'll have to, may have to do it after hours or something. Yeah, um, but he's, he is more than, yeah. he's happy to do it. So yeah, we want to get him on here. We're looking really, really looking forward to that. And uh, we're going to talk to uh, um, James Timmons with Wilcom. We'll be at the Fort Worth show. And he doesn't know it yet, but he's going to be on the podcast, too, talking software. So got a lot of good things in the works, um, you know. Keep letting us know what else you would like to, to, to hear about. You know, we've got a lot of ideas that we're going to do, and uh, we're doing this for you because we sure ain't getting paid for it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we kind of are. Sponsorships are rolling in as we speak. Yeah. All right. So, uh, that, any any other recaps from Atlantic City? No, I was. I enjoyed my Cuban sandwich. I did enjoy it. Let's yeah. talk about the food. Oh, my gosh. Mm. We had such good food. <laughs> it was good. Yeah. Uh, I, I won't I, get into it. No. Thank Let's you. Let's not. But I feel like, quick story. <laughs> it was me, you, Billy, Earl, and his buddy Kyle, right? Yes. We we tried to get dinner on, was that Tuesday night? Maybe. Yeah. Man, it was, we walked probably 14 miles. <laughs> to, was it not? Yes. Ungodly. I was like. If one more thing would have happened, I would have been crying on the floor. Yeah. And I would have, I was going to fight somebody just because, you know, I emotions. feel like I was going to die anyway. Yeah. Emotions were high. We walked through a casino over and Every, over again. God bless casino. Earl. I thought I was going to have to carry him. He wanted to get one of those uh, bicycle cart that people ride around <laughs> on. And he, he's like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to make it. And he did make it back to the hotel, but yeah, it was quite an adventure. Just where did you guys end up? Where'd you end up eating? I don't even know. Land we wound shark. up, we wound up in a bar. Oh, land shark. Land shark. There's a, there's a beer called land. Wasn't the land shark. Yeah. Brewery, land shark lager. It? Apparently Jimmy Buffett owns a lot of things and that's one of the things he owns maybe because his stuff was all over the, mm-hmm. it was like all over the, you know, you know the, 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 the big, the big Ferris wheel at Myrtle beach. At the bottom of it, right next to it, there's a Land Shark restaurant and brewery. That's what. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah, that's that, right? that's what this is, I guess. Okay, it was good, but yeah, we wound up in a bar in the casino. It was so loud. Sarah got in a fight with a bartender. <laughs> <laughs> um, Who won? Billy Who lost two hundred dollars. No one won that night. No one. No, won. nobody we were won. All Every, everybody was a loser. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, <laughs> I kept thinking, I don't want to be done with my meal because that means I have to walk back. But yeah. It was, yeah, we saw some sights on the way back, too. We'll leave that. <laughs> it's, it's always funny when you're in these casino towns, Las Vegas, or because the buildings are so big, you think, oh, it's right there. Mm. And once you start walking, it's six or seven or eight blocks. It's always a lot farther than what yeah. you think it is. Yeah, it's it's like um, it's like an episode of Ninja Warrior getting to those towns. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it, it was crazy. Yeah. I'm not used to that stuff. I'm a hillbilly type. It's good. <laughs> good to experience it, I guess. Yeah. It, at out. least, you know, the weather was good, too. Yeah. It, it's usually, it's usually the wind's blowing 125 miles an hour, and it's raining, and it's cold. 
um, having it in the in the summer was was nice. I wish they would move it to the summer because that place gets brutal in the winter. I'm not I'm not kidding you. I've been in that convention center. Well, you saw they keep the doors open in the back. Yeah. And I've been in that convention center every March setting up shows, literally wearing a sweatshirt, a hoodie, long underwear, gloves, trying to set up these machines. It is miserable. Yeah. And they always put us back toward the door for some reason. The wind blowing in there. Oh. But it was it was it was, um, it was an, as I said, it's an easy show to set up, and uh, it was nice being there in nice weather. Yeah, it was warm. But, yeah, thanks for everybody coming by the booth, and, um, yeah, hopefully you, you got the information you needed, and we'll see you at the next few shows. All right. Moving on. Uh, used machines. That's the topic of the day. The main event. Mm. Yeah. So we get calls pretty regularly, um, people asking if we – if we even sell used machines. So I think, well, maybe that's a good place to start. Mm-hmm. Um, and the short answer is yes, on occasion. <laughs> when we, <laughs> when can we get, get them. them yeah. that's their, used Baritons are hard to come by, and the reason is they're a desirable brand. Everybody's looking for one. Um, obviously, used, if you can find a used machine, that's a, a good price, um, not too old. And we'll, we'll get into all the, all the specifics here in just a minute, but... Um, Buying a used machine can be a smart thing to do um, if you get it at the right price. Um, the thing about a Bairdin is that they hold their resale value so well that it's not always a good deal buying used. But, um, yeah, we do sell used machines. Um, we don't deal with anything that is five years or old, uh, more than five years, just because we want to be able to support it for a little bit longer. You know, um, that that's that's the biggest issue with with any used machine from any brand is going to be the support, you know, how long the circuit boards last and, and the parts and everything else. And we'll explain that in just a minute. Yeah, we got, um, when did we get those machines? That was, was that last November year? of last year. Was that right? Yeah. Um, those 10 singles, they were. That was unusual. Very unusual. Were those Vs? Yeah. Yes, yep. they were Vs. They were V series. Um, they came from a customer that uh, had 41 of them. He was downsizing and, uh, we bought 11, 10, 10 or 11. Like that, yeah. I think it's what it was. But anyway, we brought them here, right here in the studio um, where the camera is. And, and Brandon and um, Sam. Sam and I refurbished them. We literally, literally took them completely apart, cleaned them, replaced what parts needed to be replaced, and uh, put them back together, test sewed them, updated the software. And they were sold before we could get them out the door. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, anything, we, delivered, we delivered. a couple Yeah, we of delivered them. a few. We we went as far as Pennsylvania. And, um, I think there was one that made it to social media, right? The rest of them. Th- they they were before we got them done. We had people waiting, you know, waiting on them. And uh, the thing about when we sell a used machine, we're going to put a little warranty on it. Mm-hmm. Um, those machines were about eight years, eight or nine years old. I, no, they weren't. That old. They weren't that old. They weren't that old. I can't remember what they. But well, you know, they were about seven years old. But I knew the machines. I knew they'd been taken care of. I and can't we, math. And, and we, we put a little bit, we put a little warranty on them, and uh, yeah, we sold them really quickly. A, a few of them went locally here. Mm-hmm. Um, we had four here that that stayed local. Yeah. And yeah, and I mean, we have. I'll have people ask like, if you if you get used machines in, can you let us know? And that, I mean, I have a list, a running list of people who are looking for used machines. Um, your luck finding them is probably better than mine. But, um, yeah, I try to keep people in mind. Like, if that situation ever does come across, that, you know, reach out to people. But, yeah, like we said, they were gone. I mean, as soon as we got them, they were sold. So, on that point, um, <clears throat> when people call in looking for a used machine, I'll usually tell them to go to the Baradin Owners Facebook group. Yep. Mm-hmm. That, if you are not already part of that group, what are you, you doing really with your sh- life? You should be. I'm not part of it. If you have a Facebook, oh, I don't have Facebook, and you have a Baradin, or you want a Baradin, I want a Baradin. You should, <laughs> you should be a part of that. <laughs> you group. had one. <laughs> I've had a few. Um, yeah. It's so useful, and yeah. there are machines that are bought and sold on there. Yep. Yeah, let me explain a little bit to you too about why we normally don't have a bunch of used machines, and it's simple. Um, we do take machines Baradins on trade. Um, here is the issue: if you want to trade your used Baradin for a new Baradin, 
we're going to give you, and I'm just going to be flat out honest with you, we're not going to give you retail for it. It's just like when you trade your car because we have to take the machine in. We're going to refurbish it. I don't care how good a shape it's in, if it's in perfect shape, we're still going to bring it in. We're going to refurbish it. We're going to put new sewing hooks on it. We're going to update the software. We're going to go over it, clean it, and we're going to put a warranty on it. So we have people say, well, uh, do you want to, you know, I'd like to trade in my used Baird. And, and I always tell them up front, we'll be glad to take it. I would love to have it. But you're going to get more for that machine selling it yourself at a retail price. It's just numbers for us. We can't buy it from you at, from retail and then resell it. Now, we're going to sell that machine at a little bit higher retail price than you would because we're going to put a warranty on it. But that's how the numbers work. Um, and, and I'm always up front with people. You know, you're better off. Would I lo- love to have that used machine? Of course. But just like you, and again, I'm, I'm being totally up front with, with this. You know, we've got to make money on it too. You know, our sales reps have to get paid. We have to put parts in it. So, you know, we want to make a little bit of money on it. Um, if it does have a warranty issue, and we usually put a six-month to one-year warranty on yeah, it. Yeah, those, and, those and, machines and we'll, had a one-year warranty. And we, and we cover those. If anything happens, it's, it's going to be under warranty. So that's why we don't get a lot of used machines. Um, now, there's a lot of really old stuff out there floating around, and we just don't deal with it because it, it's we, we can't even get some of the parts for it. Yeah. And, and, again, we'll get into that in, in a little bit more deeper here in just a minute. But that's why we don't have a lot of used machines. You know, Again, if you were to call me and say, I want to trade my Baird in, you know, what's it worth? I will give you the wholesale value, and I will give you the retail value. Um, and we, the machines that we picked up from our customer down there, he just wanted rid of. He just wanted, he said, you know, I don't, ha- I don't have time to sell. And I told him up front, I said, here's what you can get out of them if you sell them yourself. Mm-hmm. Here's what I'm going to give you for them, which was uh, was a fair price. Yeah. What he thought it was because he said, yeah, that's fine with me. I'll take that. So Yeah, and he was just looking to get, get yeah. them out of there, too. Yeah, and it was a good deal for everybody. You yeah. know, we wrote him a check for 11 of those, and then, you know, we, we got to sell them. And we made a little bit of money on it, and we had some customers who really were not going to buy a new machine. And, and they're happy. So everybody in that uh, in that scenario won. Yeah. Winners all around. Yeah. But it, it, like you said, the Facebook group is a good... Um, Even if you're not looking for a machine. No, no. There's... Yeah, I'm a, I'm a secret member, so... Oh, you said you weren't on Facebook. I'm the only reason oh. I'm on Facebook. Oh, somebody told a lie. Okay, pump the brakes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I am on Facebook. I sell things on Facebook. Like, I, I sell... How come you won't be my friend? I, I have you, one friend on there. Twenty five Fender. One friend, friend requests, and it's is my it wife. Tom? Is it Tom from MySpace? <laughs> no, we're friends on MySpace still. <laughs> my wife had to ask to be my friend on Facebook. I don't have any friends on there. It's strictly to sell things that it's business. I eat. Yes, and also to to lurk and <laughs> see people on the forum. And I'm tr- watching you. You're not a troll, are you? No, not at all. No. Okay. No, I just like to see what people are asking on there because it it helps me. It helps me sell because. You know, you get people asking questions I might not have thought of or, you know, you get to hear some people have frustrations on there and hopefully that's something, you know, we can address. Like, you right. know, we've done videos on, th- on some things to help topics and uh, I think it's a good resource. Um, also, the moderators of that group are amazing. So yeah. if you're listening, y- you're wonderful. And the technicians in that group. John, John's on there. Yeah, yeah. John is And there. he did a Q&A on there too that went really successfully. Um, Arnaldo, mm-hmm. shout out. Mm-hmm. Marlena, Marlena, shout out. Mm-hmm. Who else shout out? Shout out Puff Daddy. <laughs> uh, shout out Biggie, RIP, anyway, Tupac. Let's move on. Um, <laughs> another question we get often is um, people that people will have a machine of another brand mm-hmm. and they want to trade that in mm-hmm. and get a Barrett in. Yep. What How does about that work? That? Yes. What about it? We do not take anything but a Baradin for ourselves. However, if you have brand X and you want to trade it in, we use brokers that yep. will buy that machine for you. And what we do, we want nothing out of that mach- nothing out of your used machine. We just want to facilitate a new machine. So we'll get a broker to call you and you guys work out the price. He will pick it up. He'll write you a check and then you can buy your Baradin. Um, and that's the way it's done in the industry. I, I know unless there's a couple uh, used machine dealers out there that will take any brand, but they rarely, they don't sell new. Well, one of them does. But, you know, if you look at, um, you know, the major players, they're not going to take um, Brand X or another brand other than, their, other than theirs. 
So that's that's how that works. And again, it, they're going to give you wholesale for it. I want to I want to put that out there um, that you're always going to get more for it uh, selling it yourself. Yeah, that's the easiest. It's just like anything else. If yeah. you yeah you sell selling a used car, like you, you're going to get much better yep. money for it if you try to sell it yourself. Right. You try don't it put it on the wholesale. Baird and Owners Group. Yeah, if you're selling the 1997 yeah. Toyota Corolla because <laughs> you'll get blocked <laughs> by me. <laughs> Report it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'll report you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I just thought of a story. I'm going to leave that out. Um, so do you, should should the parts availability um, that we have in stock, should that sway somebody's um, choice of buying a, a used machine? Yes, absolutely. Um, it's not so much mechanical parts. It's electronic parts. Mm -hmm. All Every embroidered machine has, has a computer built into it. It has circuit boards. The older the machine, the harder it is to repair these circuit boards. And we're running into that on our D-series machines, which are about 20 years old. Yeah. Um, me mechanically, we, we've got everything mechanically for them, for the most, you know, unless it's maybe something from, you know, earlier than 90s. The Beat series machines, which were 92, 93, 94, those are, those are dinosaurs now. It's really hard to get parts for those. And we still have a few, but um, there aren't that... Well, actually, there's more out of those out there running than what you think. I run into them all the time, but we saw one down at um, down in the Sand Hills. Where oh, um, in Aberdeen. Yeah, they had them, but um, yeah, obviously parts. I mean, if, if you're going to buy a used, and, and this this is for any brand. I mean, not only Bearden, but Bearden, Tajima, any any other brand. I have a rule. Me, I wouldn't go back any more than maybe seven or eight years. I try to keep it to five um, just because you want to be sure if you buy that used machine that it's going to have some life left in it and yeah. you can get support and parts for it. Just had a lady. We, funniest thing happened to us. Just had a lady. I think I'd been talking to her before. She'd been looking and looking for a used Baird and bless her heart, and I hope she finds one. Um, and, and here's your, well, I'll, I'll say this in just a minute about, about helping you with the used machines but she sent me a thing that she found on facebook, facebook yeah. and it was the machines 20 years old and it's way overpriced and she says is this a good deal and i know people are looking for baritons and everybody's looking for a deal and the the price was three times what it should have been um and i just flat out told her that machine is 22 years old there are some boards in that machine that we cannot have repaired it's not that we don't want to do it and let me explain this too it's you can't get the parts to fix the boards, the diodes, and all that stuff. Uh, you can't get them. That, that nobody in the world is making them. Um, now that being said, there are some people here in the states, a few people that can get some of these electrical parts and make them. But we're not we're not going to do that. Uh, if we can't rebuild the board and and put a warranty on it and make sure that it works, we don't want to waste your time. So. Yeah. Everything has a <coughs> life expectancy, even human beings, right? Yeah. So, you know, if you've got an embroidery machine that you've had for 20 years, 22 years, 25 years, it's still running, you've, you've got the good out of that thing. It's mm -hmm. made you a lot of money. You've been able to write it off uh, um, as a piece of capital equipment. And the new machines are so much more efficient. They're quieter. They're faster. They do everything. They're much more productive that at some point in time, if you're going to stay in business, you probably should buy a new machine. I'm going to get off on a little bit of a tangent there, but... Um, well, no, you, and you also, you don't want to get inherit a problem. Like, you may get that machine, and for the original owner, it worked for 25 years. Who knows? You get it into your your business or your garage, you fire it up, you get two pieces out of it, and all of a sudden it's fried. Yeah, I mean, you never know when something like that's going to happen. And, and the board's blown up, yep. or, or, or and you call us, I need a board, and it's like, we don't make that board, we don't repair that board, we can't. Uh, yep. Again, it's not, I, I will, I'll tell you this, there's nobody in the, in the industry, and I know this for a fact, I've been here, there's nobody in the industry that has supported machines electronically as well as we have. A lot, most of our competitors are seven, eight, ten years, they're done. They're like, yeah. we're not We're not doing that. We, we were doing, we do, we were doing 22 year old boards and it's getting to where we flat out just cannot get the parts to fix yeah. them um and there has to come some sort of like if i was the customer i would understand that like i mean you you've gotten your life out of that machine i, I mean nothing will last forever so eventually you've just gotta buy a new machine yeah 
You've made a good analogy, too, about um, trying to fix a 20-year-old computer Mm -hmm. that I think makes a lot of sense. Yeah, try fixing an Atari. Well, I mean, if you've got a 186 computer, <laughs> if you still have one that works, and you take it into the computer store and try to get it fixed, they're yeah. just going to laugh you right out. And it's hey, the Geek Squad can do it all. Here. Yeah, they can't fix that. <laughs> <laughs> like, what is this thing? Yeah, half those kids weren't even, they weren't even born when Ataris were out. I remember Ataris. Yeah, it's a great machine. Um, so, yeah, the, the parts availability, yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and specifically boards. If if that's going to be with any machine, once the boards are gone, they're gone. There's n- not a whole lot you can do about it. It becomes a very heavy and very big um, paperweight. paperweight. Yep. So generally, what are a few things to look for and avoid? In a used machine? Mm-hmm. Of course. That's what we're talking about. Right? We're talking about the Atlantic City <laughs> trade show. Avoid. <laughs> Vinny. <laughs> Avoid Vinny Acarino. Vinny. I'm just kidding. Love you, Vinny. We love you, Vinny. Um, I just wish I could have said something. Also, hi, Sean. It was yeah, lovely yeah. seeing you, Sean. Sean. Yeah, Lee's boy was there. Yeah. He saved my butt. How's that? I got to sit at the end of the table with him at one meal, so I didn't have to hear Vinny for oh, you three were, hours. Okay. You weren't in the penalty it box. Was peaceful. <laughs> <laughs> I was not. The, no. It was, um, <laughs> it was so hard. I, my attention span is bad anyway, and like I feel like I'll just put it out there. I was sitting directly across from Vinny. I felt like he was talking directly to me, and I would be mid mid by uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> but I love him. We love Vinny. Yeah, he is so. He's and he'll, the, he'll the tell the you. He'll person. tell you. I told him. I said, when you die, they'll have to beat your tongue to death to get it to stop <laughs> flapping, because. They'll have a separate, a separate casket for his tongue and one for his body because yeah. it won't stop. He takes over, too. He has more energy than he a does. toddler. He yeah. exhausts me. I was, <laughs> I was like, please, can I go to bed? <laughs> <laughs> so if anyone is wondering if Vinny still works for Baradin, yes, yes, yes he's he still does. here. He will be here and the cockroaches will be here <laughs> when, we're, when we're all gone. Um, back on track... <laughs> What I look for or board and use machine, um, and we get asked that a lot. You know, what should I be looking for? You know, I wouldn't go back. The, we'll get into this in just a minute too. But our, our machines have a nomenclature of it's an alphabet soup, and we'll explain that um, the model numbers. I would not go back to a V series, which I'm trying to remember the years they were made. Yeah, I went to go write a bunch of them down. Yeah. Uh, 2006 was the start of the V? Yeah, I think so. Until? The D's ended, ended in about 2005 to about 2011, I think, or 2010. Yeah, that's probably right. So you would not get a V? No, I, would, I wouldn't. Go, I would, oh. V would be the earliest that I would buy. So, first of all, I wouldn't buy anything earlier than a V um, because the V has, has the updated sewing head. Um, it has the um, USB Mm-hmm. It has some updates that make it so uh, better trimmers, um, and we still have a lot of parts for them. Yeah, they're twelve needles, right? No, nope. what are they? They're fifteen. Those that we had were fifteen. Now they those were. We had were nine. Nine. Yeah, mm. yes. those were the earlier XLs. So. Uh huh. Yeah. So yeah, we've never made twelve. Well, not in the states. Um, yeah. In, in Japan, they make them. But anyway, I know there's twelves. <laughs> yeah, but. Um, I lost my train of thought. What were we talking? Oh, how far you'd go back in a for a machine? Yeah, that's as far as I, as, as I would go back. And you know, as the machines have gotten newer and more updated, you got to keep in mind too, they have fewer boards than what they had back in the yeah. '90s. So the electronics are more compact. One board will do multiple things. Where before you had to have a board for every little thing the machine right. was doing. So there's less to go wrong electronically. Um, th- this the Baird and Sewing Head. If anybody's had one, or, or if, if you know about them, it, it is rock solid. I mean, there's not a lot. If you oil that sewing head and take care of it, keep it clean, honestly, I don't know if you could possibly wear it out. You're going to wear the, the, the boards out before you're going to wear out the sewing head, as long as it's taken care of. So um, I don't know if that's going to jump into this. this uh, you can just, just run right into it. Yeah, yeah, the, the, right, yeah, the next thing or not, though. Um, oh, asking about can you update the automatic? No, you can't. The electronics on any, this is with any embroidery machine. When we talk about the electronics, we're talking about the automat or the controller, all the wiring that goes with it, the pano, panograph drive motors, and the boards. All that's the electronics. It's all tied together to work 
with that specific model of machine. Mm-hmm. Would it be possible? Probably. Would it be what, feasible? No. No. The, just the uh, automat itself, just the automat is about five grand. Yeah. So that's half the price of a single head or not quite. Yeah. Third the price of a single head. So it doesn't make sense. Yeah, but if you're also buying a used machine, you buy a $5,000 automat, that adds up. That's well, and, and again, you're not getting all the benefits from, you know, from the other updates right, the other that we, we've machine. made. You're only going to have, and, and, and what people think they can just switch automats, and you just, you really can't do that. And and again, that's not only Baradin, but that's every other machine out there. So um, if there's an exception to it, uh, I don't know about it. But uh, uh, what would I avoid in a used machine? Um, if I were buying a used machine, I would want to know how the, uh, who had the machine. Um I probably wouldn't buy one that was run in a factory a lot. You don't know how well it was taken care of. If an individual had it, we'll say someone had it in their garage or in their house, they probably didn't run it, tw- you know, two shifts like they would in a factory. Right. And I'm not telling you not to buy a factory machine, but you really have to know what you're looking for because these things can get very expensive to fix um, if you don't know what you're looking for. If you just buy one on a whim because it was at a good price, um, you can you can get burnt. Um, and what I would suggest is if you give us the serial number and the model number, we can look up the history right. on that machine. Yep. Service you know, records. All, all that stuff. I mean, I, I am more than happy, and Sarah knows this, <coughs> I get calls what, probably a couple of week, couple calls a week yeah. asking, should I buy this machine? You know, is it a good deal? And I'll, I'll be up front with you. If it's a good deal, I'll tell you, jump all over it. That sounds really good. If it's bad, I'll, I'll tell you. Now you might want to look elsewhere. It's not, you know, it's, you're going to be putting a lot of money into it. Um, but... Again, if you don't know the machine, well, let me let me back up and say, if you are an embroiderer and you know embroidery machines, I would go and sew the machine. Mm-hmm. Listen to it run. Look at the stitch quality. Um, if you're experienced, you can tell a lot about a machine just by listening to it run and sewing it yourself if the seller will allow you to do that. And I wouldn't buy one unless they would allow me to do that. If you're inexperienced and looking at it, you really need to contact the manufacturer, whomever it is, Find out about the machine, find out what the support is, what their policy is for training, costs, all that stuff. And um, le- like us, let us do a, a history. If it was built, if it was sold after, from 2000 forward, we have ev- we have records of it. Um, if it's before 2000, we don't. Um, it just our um, database didn't go back that far. It was where we were bought out, when we were making yep. so. Um because every machine has a serial number, we know where that machine, we know who the original owner was. We, we wouldn't know who the second owner was or third owner. But there's chances are that that person bought parts from us. So we mm-hmm. can probably trace that to that serial number, more than likely. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, there's there's things to look for. Um, and again, if it's if it's a 20-year-old machine, you, you probably unless somebody gives it to you, you probably just want to walk away from it, really. Um, yeah, and the thing, too... Um, you know, because of the demand for machines and, you know, our issues with getting machines here, I feel like the price of new stuff is a lot higher, too, because it's an instant thing. You know, you can... Well, let me... That machine picture that I sold you guys showed, sold, what, <laughs> that I showed you. You know what that machine sold for brand new? That machine in 2000, 1999, that machine was $28,000. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was 28000 for that's a single head? That, yeah. For a single head. That's, that's what's so wild. funny to me. Like, you hear people that are like, oh, my gosh, it's so much more. Like, if you knew what these cost, yeah. they have come down so much in price. They, and they it's have. so much more machine. But it's gotten easier to make the electronic components. Uh, I mean. Well, I mean, technology. I mean, look what yeah. computers yeah. used to cost. Robots. And flat screen TVs and all that. Yeah. But, you know, th- you know, the, the Pro 3 out there, 16500 It's You could almost buy two of those than what you could for that, that 20, 21, 22, 23-year-old machine. It's crazy. It, 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 but it's good. It's good for the consumer. Yeah, absolutely. It's good for us. Um, you know, fewer parts we have to stock, fewer boards we have to stock. I mean, it's, it's better for everyone. But yeah, when somebody, it's it's all relevant what you think. And and, and new people, when you think of embroidery machine, I, a lot of people think, well, that's the thing that's in grandma's bedroom <laughs> right. where she right. goes in there. But you know, these are sophisticated machines that do. Uh, grandma couldn't keep up with this. <laughs> You know, blow your grandma out of the yeah. water. Well, she's on crack. <laughs> that should be the new ad, Barrett, and blow your granny out of the water. 
<laughs> Watch out, Granny. Get your grandma <laughs> some crack and keep up with the Bearden. Uh, serial numbers. So let's yeah. go over those. Let's go over the alphabet. Every Bearden, and I assume every, I know Tajimas have them, I assume every other machine has them, has a plate riveted onto the chassis of the machine. They will always start with a B for Bearden. They will be BE, Bearden Electronic. And or is it Bearden Embroidery? Bearden in Electronics. Could be Embroidery. I, think I was always embroidery. told it was Electronics. I think it's Embroidery. Well, you could be wrong. I've been here longer than you. Or you could just be old and forgetting. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to say. Yeah. yeah. That's, we'll debate that off the air. Yeah, yeah um, we'll figure it out. But Leave a comment. And the, and the two, <laughs> Let us know what you think. Bearded and elephants. The, like right now we're selling, we're selling the K-series machines, which this, the multi-heads are B-E-K-Y, the single heads are B-E-K-T. And the Y is the, the type. The multi-heads get the Y-series auto mat, which is a bigger touchscreen. The single heads get the T-series auto mat. And then so, it will be... So after B-E, your, whatever the yeah. next, that's your auto mat. Right. Whatever, if it's K-Y, K-T... Yeah. NT. So, so that when we say a machine was an N series, it was a B E N T. Mm-hmm. Um, when we say it was a, a, a V series, it was a B E V T. We know that's a single. When somebody tells me, I will ask people all the time, well, what's the model number? And I, I guarantee you, they never know. They never know what it is. I know no. it's a Baritone. Okay, it's fine. But if you go to that plate and give me the serial number and the model number, I can tell you more, a whole lot more about it. Yeah. Um, but that tells me, I, I know by, by, if it's a V series, I know about what years it is, but they also model that they have changes in the model year, the little subtle changes that you can't see. It, they may have a little change in the electronics. They may have used a different power supply, um, may have used a bigger power supply. And I'm, I'm just throwing things out there. I'm not saying they actually did this, but things mechanically, they pretty much stayed the same, but electronically they would make a few little tweaks to them in, in the model year. But that serial number lets us know. Japan will tell us serial number from here to here had this particular power supply. So when you call in and say, hey, I've got this machine, uh, serial number, blah, 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 we can pull it up and say, well, w- you know, it would take this power supply. Um, so that, that that helps us. And, and you know, we, we keep really good records on that in our database so we can know exactly to get you the right part that you need. Um so now we're, we're what I, I just said that then we're doing the K series. <laughs> we're doing the K series machine. The predecessor to this was the X. We had the X series machine out there and the predecessor that was the V. Um, then we had uh, D. the D and then the N. N. And we used to make a machine when I first came here. We had, it was called the B-E-A-T, the beat. Yeah, the, the B-E-A-T-M-E. Um, beat me. Beat me. We had a, <laughs> and it, was, it, was, it was funny. And they're, they're talking. Did I show you that email I got from Japan? About the next, what they're going to call the next yes. one. <laughs> Is this an exclusive? What was <laughs> yeah, should we? Should no. we drop they were asking us what, what, what they should call the next. They're already working on the next series, Automat, which will be out in probably four or five years, but I can't remember what it was. I wouldn't, I can't say anyway, but they were, what do you think about this, this, or this? It was kind of fun. It was funny. It yeah. stood for something else. I can't remember what it was. Yeah, it sounded like something else. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jamie calls these, when she first came here, she called these Becky. Becky. <laughs> She said, these Becky machines. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> you know, Becky. And I, it finally hit me. She's well, probably yeah. not the only person. Yeah. Well, I, I'd never heard it. But well, it, that's, I mean, that's what it's she, been. When she first, she said, well, you guys sold all these Becky machines. I'm like, what, what are you talking about? She's B-E-K-Y, don't you know? I'm, well, I do now. <laughs> no, um, I don't know. But anyway, anyway, that lets us know the model that you have. And then the, let's go to the serial number. The serial number... I think from 2000 or 2000, when, when the D-Series came out, prior to the D-Series, the first two numbers was the year the machine was made. So it would be like um, 00, you knew it was a 2000, uh, 99, it was a 99. When the D-Series came out, they started putting the year at the end. Mm-hmm. So that machine right there is a, uh, I looked at it a while ago, it was a 21D and the D is the month. Mm-hmm. So A, B, C, D, January, February, March, April. Built in April of 21. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. The, <laughs> April, the, the, yeah. the, the, letter, the letter in the serial number will tell you the month it, it was yeah. built. Now, But they should just do D for December. No, they don't do it that way. I said they should. Well. Because <laughs> so you got A, B, C, D, April. 
I don't think the Japanese have. It's, uh, yeah. They don't have. They don't have December in there. They don't. <laughs> I don't know. Whoa. That's crazy. I'm sure they do. <laughs> yeah. All that to say, you can learn quite a bit from your serial number. No, your serial number, you, you can. I mean, when you give us your serial number, we know we know when the machine was manufactured. Doesn't mean it was sold then. Right. That's when it was manufactured because it could have. First of all, it takes a month to get in good times. It takes a month to get here. <laughs> Thirty years now, ago. <laughs> so, when you know when we now we're selling everything as it comes off the boat, but it, when they're in stock, it, it, sometimes a machine could sit there for a couple months, especially if there's a twelve or fifteen head that doesn't move a whole right. lot. And it, and there's there's always and people people get so upset over this, Janu- in January when that. that there are 20, well, like in 22, when the 22 models come out, nothing's going to change. Nothing at all. You right. can't tell it by looking at it, a 22 from a 21. But we'll, for the first three months of 2022, they'll get a 21 machine. And people will get upset about that. And it's like, well, it was built. It could have been built in November. Mm-hmm. It probably was or December. It's going to have the year number. It's not like a car to where, you know, it's going to be worth less, um, but we've even had a couple customers say, well, I don't want to, you know, don't ship a machine until it has a 21 on it or 20 or whatever. I'm like, that's fine. You, you'll have to wait for like three or four months yeah. because it has to, they're building Just them. Just go down the line. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I, that's a tangent. It's not neither here nor there. In it. But, uh, anyway. All right, so what, what about um, scheduling service or getting a technician out for a used machine? Uh, if you want somebody to look at a, at a used machine, you know, call tech support um, in Cleveland, and uh, you know, tell tell uh, tell Amy or uh, Tracy Tracy what you want to do, and we'll you know we'll, a tech will come out at the going rate. You know, what whatever the the rate is to have a tech come out. Um, if you've got a local technician or uh, any any a good sewing machine technician would probably know about the sewing head. They're not going to know about about the electronics, um, but if I were to buy a machine that I didn't know, first of all. If I were to buy a used machine, I would want to know who had it. Yeah. I, 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 this is just me, and I'm not telling you what to do. Um, I mean, I'm experienced. If, if, I, if I did buy it from someone I didn't know, I would take some stuff and sew it. Me. But, but I know how to do that. I know how to run it. If, and if you're experienced, you can do that. And, and you'll know if you're experienced if the machine sews, sews good or it doesn't. If you're inexperienced... I would really pay to have that machine looked at mm-hmm. or take an experienced friend with you that knows about embroidery. Please just don't buy a pig in a poke because, as I said a while ago. What the, what is that? A pig in a poke? <laughs> have you nope. heard that? Nope. You have not heard a pig in a poke? No. Okay, right. you smooth, smooth brain. brain. <laughs> you, guys are, you guys are definitely smooth brains. You okay. haven't heard pigs? Leave it in the comments below. <laughs> <laughs> you have no. Okay, let's Never. say, all right, you know what that uh, means, though, right? A what? A pig and a poke. And a poke. Pig and a poke. It's pig like and a pig a in a basket. A, a poke a, is a basket. <laughs> Come on. Come on now. It's like a pig. Use your words. <laughs> What's a poke? I can't. Am I that old? Is that, am I that much older than you guys? Yeah. I don't know if it's that or if you, you just fell down the stairs. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, explain it. Because you haven't. <laughs> I don't think he knows. No, he's like, you haven't heard of it? You know, it's like a pig, you know, a poke. It's a pig in It's like a basket. If you went pig shopping, Mm -hmm. (laughs) all right? No, it's... A living pig? I'm telling you. I don't care, dead, living, whatever. If you went pig shopping and they got all the pigs lined up and you you pick one out, you want want that pig. Mm -hmm. All right? (laughs) What what if they... (laughs) <laughs> I'm scared. No. Nope. If you buy a pig and you never see it, you're buying it in a poke, a, a bag. Man, it's a hillbilly thing. It's a, you buy a pig in a poke. You don't know what you're getting until you open up the bag. Okay. What's the poke? <laughs> Is a poke a bag? <laughs> it's a bag. It's a brown bag. That's a poke. When I was a kid. Okay. When I was a kid growing up in the, in the hills, it was a poke. Is a. I grew up in these same hills. I ain't heard that. <laughs> Nobody po- poked me a- with anything. <laughs> call that a poke a brown bag was a poke really it, a, a poke lunch you you put your lunch in a poke come on you, know, you guys please help me you old farts out there help me out you know what a poke if is if you're older than 19 if you were born <laughs> i cannot bl- I'm i've just never start in my life pig in a poke no i'll use it i like it i'm not sure that's what it is you don't know what you're buying 
It's, it's based, that's, here's the short. The short. You don't know what you're buying. You're buying a pig and a poke. You have no idea what it is. Do you open the poke? <laughs> Take a peek in your poke and see what the pig looks like. <laughs> you, you guys are beating a dead pig today. <laughs> All right. Uh, warranty transfer. Okay, warranty transfers. If it is the machine still under warranty, uh, we do charge a warranty transfer fee. It's a nominal fee just for us to cover it. Um, but you do have to have a Baradin, certified Baradin technician come out and look at it and make sure that it hasn't been abused. Um, so it, it might be worth it to you. Our warranty is 532. It's five years on the, on, the, on the main drive motor. It is three years on all the electronics, and it's two years on everything else with the exception of consumables. So if you buy a machine that's three years old, and I, I've been here forever, I... I think we just replaced one drive motor on a machine. That's just something that doesn't go. Every, That's an impressive statistic. Well, even the Panagraph drive motors, I'm, I'm telling you, they just they just don't go out. They don't. They, you know, Baird in Japan puts big, heavy, they overbuild the motors on them. Now, that being said, if you had to, you know, put a drive motor in it, yeah, it's expensive. Not hard to do, but but because they're, on all the machines, they're pretty, pretty easy to access, but... Yeah. Um, so uh, you know, when I, when I have a uh, being experienced, would I do a warranty transfer myself? No, but if you're new to the industry, it might be worth doing it, doing it. But again, when you look at what you pay for a machine and all the costs add, that you add to it, it's not always a good idea to buy a used machine. I, I never discourage someone from buying one if it's a good deal mm-hmm. and please call us, call me. I I will. I promise you, I will guide you. I want you to buy a Baradin, whether I want you to buy a new one, but if you don't, I want you to buy a used one. Um, because if you like it and your business grows, you you may buy a new one. So you know, I would not discourage you from buying a used Baradin as long as it's a good deal. I don't want to see any customer get burned. Yeah, peek in the poke. Before you I don't want you to buy a pig in a poke. Peek in the poke. Peek before in, you. It's a pig. No, but you have no, to peek. But in you have to peek poke. into the poke <laughs> before the purchase. Man, we have got a, this has been a tangent nightmare. We've You've really, been talking most of the time, so that's on you, brother. I know. Uh, last final. Uh, How would you go about shipping a used machine? What's the most single single heads are easy. Unless you're up. shipping them across country. For shipping them across country, I have built crates to ship single heads. Um, I built one right outside my door here a few years ago um, to ship one to, I shipped a single to California. Um, but if you can transport it in yourself, you know, a few states or somebody comes and gets it, that would be the best thing. Anytime you're not, not knocking trucking companies and common carriers, but you, there, it could be damaged in transit with a forklift where have we seen that happen? <laughs> um, uh, what day is it? <laughs> yeah. But but again, most of the time that does not happen. Um, but if if I were going to ship with a common carrier and it was my money on it, I would buy the insurance for it, which is pretty expensive. Um, multi heads are a little harder to do. Um, yeah. If you don't know how to ship a multi head, you can really screw it up. The heads have to be locked so they don't move right. on a single head. That's you don't have to do that. But on a multi head, <laughs> the machines slide back and forth. That's how they color change. So. You have to lock the heads. Uh, somebody, somebody just a few months ago moved a 12 head and did not lock the heads, and they got racked. And it, it, can it be fixed? Of course, but it's 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 just added expense. I would call us if you're going to going to haul one. Uh, if you're, you're hauling a multi head, it might be a good idea to find someone reputable to do it, and you know we can help you with that. Um, I've got a guy that I use sometimes, Eric. Shout out, Eric. He hey, hauls uh, he hauls machines for us. Um, yeah, there, there's there's there. a couple other guys that do it. Don't spill yeah. that. You'll you'll I'll kill a all servo us. motor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are people that do that. Though. I mean, they're well, I mean, I haul multi heads all the time in my trailer. But you know, you got to get them off their wheels. I block them up. We strap them in. We make sure the heads are locked, and they actually travel really, really well. Um, yeah. But if you don't know, if you just roll it in there and strap it in, you're asking for trouble. So. Um, on a multi-head, I'll jack it up, put blocks under it, get it off its wheels. I'll strap it to the side of my trailer. Um, y- you got to keep in mind these multi-heads are really, really, um, they're really heavy. I mean, it's a big chunk of metal. Uh, the single heads are easier, except for the CO one. That thing's hard to. Yeah, yeah. Um, a- but yeah, I mean, you can. 
you you can haul them. But again, if you're if you're looking to buy a machine f- from California, I wouldn't recommend that because you might be getting a pig in a poke. <laughs> what if you're in California? Then I would go ahead and buy <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and poke yeah. that pig. <laughs> Yeah, but that's something you have to factor into the cost too, because yeah. that's going to be a, an expense. I mean, shipping's already expensive anyway. But oh, it's yeah, it's going yeah. up. So. so you know, you're factoring into that into the machine. Uh, I don't know. It just seems it seems like a lot. I, if if I were purchasing a machine, it would have to be something local I could go pick up. Yeah, or within yeah. like a day yes. or yeah. two. Yeah. Drive. Absolutely, go I look think at it. Best. Um, I, I like the new machine. I, I like. The new technology. Yeah. I like the latest and greatest. I like that new machine smell. They just smell so good when they come out of the crate. <laughs> it just it's 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 so it's good. like a pig in a poke. But I, I understand we have customers that have never bought a new machine from us and have a bunch of Baritons. Mm-hmm. I could probably name five customers right now that only buy used. And I know one we can walk to. Yeah, most of them. Most of them have a technician there that that they can work on them. Uh, they buy a lot of parts from us, and there's certainly nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. Um. The thing about the new machines is, and I'm not discouraging anyone to buy used. Don't get me wrong, I'm not. But um, not only technology, but you got to look at what that machine's going to produce at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Um, they are they they sew faster, they color change faster, they trim fat. Everything is faster. So this single head right here, like the NT that I was telling you guys about, that this lady was asking me, this machine could probably almost sew two pieces. To, to the one piece that that one would sew. First of all, that old NT machine, you're lucky to get 800 stitches a minute. Mm-hmm. Very lucky. Second of all, the ramp-up speed, it's, it's, it's like your car going from zero to 60. Right. If you watch these machines, and you've watched an NT sew, it oh, yeah, takes yeah. It, it's yeah. like me getting out of bed in the morning. It takes it a while to get going. Yeah. These get up to speed really quickly. And all those seconds add up. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, you're going to get more pieces. So... It's like the eight head machine, eight head Baritons. Now, when I first started, twelves and fifteens were what people were buying for you know to do a lot of um, a lot of pieces, a lot of production. That eight head today will outso easily that N series twelve head. It will outproduce it. At the end of the day, it will sew more pieces with even four fewer heads. And people have a hard time believing that. But if you would, if you see them sew side by side. You would understand how how it, you know how it works. There's you know people get caught up on oh, I'm getting on a tangent, but no people way. get caught up with sewing speed, how yeah, fast it yeah. sews. Your machine is not going to sew a thousand stitches a minute full blast. No, you're not. It's not. There's no. It's going to depending on stitch length. Um, it's going to slow down. It's going to speed up. Uh, the stitches get longer. It's going to slow down. The panic graph's going to slow down. That's any embroidery machine. So you know just keep that in mind. Um, too, you know, don't get hung up on sewing speed and all this other stuff. It's the bottom line is how many pieces do you get at the end of the day? That's the most important thing. Yeah, yeah. and it's not always that this the the top speed of the machine is is very small part of it. There's a whole lot more that goes into that. Yeah, so I think just to to wrap up on the the used uh, used used machine topic, I think do your homework. Call us. Yeah, um, if you can find out the service records if we have them we'd be happy to give you that um if you can go take a look at it if they'll allow you to sew on it that way you can kind of get a feel for the machine see how it's running see what it sounds like um but yeah i think that covered about everything I yeah and, and again you use us as a as a reference yeah. i mean feel free to call us call sarah sarah will patch, yeah, and patch we're, over we'll, when you do call we're not trying to steer you away no. from buying a used machine so we can sell you a new one we just we don't want people to get burnt. I mean, nobody wants right. a bad experience buying something. The next thing you know, two weeks later, it doesn't work. Like, yeah, I, I don't want customer, that to happen to anybody. I had a customer, Sarah patched a cu- customer over to me a few months ago, and they were looking at this machine, and they really, really wanted to buy it so bad. And I, I just told them the truth. I'm, it was really old. And I'm like, I said, my goodness, I said, you're making a huge mistake. And they literally got ticked at me. And I'm like, well, you asked me for my opinion, and with all due respect, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> if you, I'm not telling, I will never tell you not to buy it. But if you ask me my opinion, I'll, I'll tell you. I may say I wouldn't buy it. It's, it's your money. Yeah. But, but when you it breaks and you can't get a board or a part, I, I, I'm not the kind of person to say I told you so. But you know, don't ask me for my opinion if, if you're not going to listen. You know. I, 
And I'm not trying to be mean about it. Just I hate to see people. I mean, that this deal was horrible. And I just want. I think I finally told him. I said. I said. I said. You know, you're you're crazy if you buy that machine. I mean, really. I I I, I don't want to see you make a huge mistake. Yeah, I think people get really excited about finding they, they, a deal. They and do. Like a used Baradin. Yeah. So. Who doesn't love a deal? Yeah, and sometimes it's a pig in a poke. It is. <laughs> Oftentimes, there's a pig in that poke. Well, there was a big stinky pig. And you don't know what it's going to be. How it's going to be. In this poke. I'm telling you, it was horrible. Um, Did I call you? (laughs) Did we cover everything? Uh, Yeah. Yeah, and you guys learn, you know, you learn learn something new. Yeah, and if you have any questions about a used Mm -hmm. machine generally, um, leave it in the comments. And if you have something specific, call us. Yep. We are happy to help. Yeah, we want you to be happy and, you know, it, it should be a... If you're buying a Baritone, we want it to be a good experience for you, used or new, and we don't want people getting getting burned. So, lastly, some of you have probably gotten an email from me from sales at Baritone. Um, it's not spam. Um, we are wanting to know, we, we want to know how we're doing. Um, so, if you bought a machine in uh 2021 what year are we in 2021 yep yes um you will likely get a google form survey from me um if you fill it out we're gonna randomly select a winner every quarter are we gonna do that on the podcast yeah Yeah, so the thing is we're gonna choose the winner next week for our first next week or next show next show okay next show two weeks from now Yes. Three. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> you'll when the see next, it. When this goes live, you'll know it's live. <laughs> Wherever you find your podcast, yeah. it'll be there. We should do a, we should find, we should do a creative way. We to, are. We want to. Oh, we, sweet. Yeah, we should um, like screen record because we're going to do it randomly. So maybe we can screen record and show it on the podcast of like yeah. who's. You're the technical yeah. guy. You figure it out. We're all looking at you, Brandon. Yeah. <laughs> hey, guys. It's all up to you. <laughs> we're yeah, throwing well, this at Brandon right yeah. now, but he's into no, it. Yeah, I'll do it. I got it. So the prizes are, um, well, you get to choose between a hoop master kit that is single Holy fixture, snap. two hoops of any size, Mighty Hoops, or a $500 credit to the shop Baradin parts department. Mm. That's so a good, those are good prizes. Yeah, I know and what I get. You'll be notified via email as well, well so I you don't have kit. to okay. listen, but you should. Yeah, yeah, you do have to listen. You if you don't listen, I'm going to come poke your pig. <laughs> <laughs> Get that? No. No. I've been told no. <laughs> Don't. I want to be poking pigs. Uh, All right. Do we cover everything? More than. <laughs> more than more than everything. Is this I, two I hours so. long? No, no. Just it an seems hour. like we've been talking forever. Uh, no, it. Uh, no. There's new. There's new words and phrases that we've learned. We learned pretty so much, much every episode. Every episode. You were a wealth of knowledge. I like to think I am. I don't know if it's that or just um, old old sayings. I like to think I'm expanding your vocabularies, the way you think about things, and your perspectives. I I, I think I, bring I fell asleep. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think I bring a lot. I think I bring a lot to this <laughs> this, this round this table. Round table. <laughs> yeah. Not necessarily this podcast, but this round table. I mean, I, there's phrases that I know, and they're I don't say them. They're old, and well, a lot came never from my dad. Heard that. I've never. never heard that. Well, you, your grand grandpa, he had. Yeah, there's no doubt about and, that. And, and, I know and, and, most of them. I've never heard never heard that. I cannot believe. I, 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 please, if if you guys don't listen to this, or you do, or whatever, and you and you've never made a comment, will you please comment about the pig in the poke? I just. I didn't make it up. I know I heard it from my dad. No, you said it with you said it with confidence. I'm sure it's a thing. It I've is. never heard it. I'm glad I know it. I just want to use it properly in context when somebody does ask me a question. Yeah, we'll just tell them. You know what? If you buy that over there, you're buying a pig in a poke. You don't know where you're getting. No, but like, what? <laughs> like, look in that bag. <laughs> what you got in that bag? All righty. So giveaway next episode. So yes, make sure you tune in. And we'll do Please. a please. We'll, we'll do a recap too. On yeah, the, uh, recap, on, um, recap, uh, Fort, Worth. Fort Worth. Yep. Um, if you're out in Texas or anywhere in that area listening, come to the show and see us. This, you, we hope you did. This, we hope yeah. you saw us. It so already really happened. Good time I done seeing it, you, <laughs> probably. Okay. <Did> you, <laughs> <laughs> keep going. Okay. Keep going. Yeah. Did you like us? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Were we nice? Yeah.
<laughs> what was your favorite part when I showed up? <laughs> we got we to gotta go. We're getting yeah, ready. Just, yeah. yeah. It's, we got to go do work or something. Yeah. yeah. We got a long, Phones we got a long weekend. We need to go we're, we're heading towards. All righty. Please subscribe. Uh, leave a comment. Um, what else? <laughs> <laughs> Email us. If Email. You want. Yes. Yeah. All the, files yeah. Gmail. all the links, all the things. Make sure you like it. Um, and see you guys on the next episode. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't poke your pigs. <laughs>